What's up, guys? It's Wick. Um, doing the video that I've been postponing and procrastinating on doing on for months. This is a trap keep video. Um, you know, uh, trap keeps, when they first came about, were a game changer. Uh, one of the more significant discoveries, and, and I'd say the really brilliant part of it, is you have to understand mechanics in a very beautiful way to be able to design one. And, you know, um, it's one of those things that I know this video is going to get a lot of controversy. I've even had people tell me not to make it so that everybody's not making trap keeps because it ruins the game, but they're here to stay. And anybody who hits one is going to have a battle report with the design of one anyway, which is almost impossible to do nowadays, uh, to, to not find one or not see. Uh, in Battlefield or SVS. So, uh, you know, it's time to make this video. So um, let's talk first about um, what this doing? being Okay, a number video. three. Uh, and it's going to be a wake video with Moneyball movies scenes in it. So Scott Hatterberg. Who? Hatterberg. Here we go. Exactly. He sounds like an Oakland A already. Okay. Yes, he's had a little problem with his elbow. Oh, problem. Yeah. He can't throw. He's, got he's a career 260 hitter. The best part of his career is over. I say it's just getting started. I know Boston wants to cut him, and no one wants to pick him up. That's good for us. He's cheap. Let me get this. Let me get this straight. You're going to get a guy that's been released by half the organizations in professional baseball because he's got non-repairable nerve damage in his elbow, and he can't throw. He can't throw, and he can't field. But what can he do? Oh boy, guys, check your reports, or I'm going to point at Pete. He gets on he gets base. On base. He, gets on base. He, he get on base. So he walks a lot. He gets on base a lot. Rocco, do I care if it's a walk or a hit? Pete? You do not. I do not. Billy, I got 37 go free agents that are better than those three guys. Wait a minute, let me get this straight. So, you're not going to bring in one, but three defective players to replace Jim. Is that what I'm hearing? You're not buying into this Bill James bullshit, are you? This is the new direction of the Oakland A's. We are card counters at the blackjack table. And we're going to turn the odds on the casino. Uh, I don't see it. Seriously, guys, I think we have to remember, this is the man. He answers to no one except ownership and God. And he doesn't have to answer to us. We make suggestions, he makes decisions. Look, that's all fine and well, but we've been working our asses off for the last six and a half weeks Brady. to make this ball club better, and you're shitting all Brady. over it. This is not a discussion. What are we discussing? Barry, not a discussion. So one of the things I love about that scene is the idea of, uh, you know, the Oakland A's having such a crap pay cap and trying to compete with the bigger, richer teams, which, you know, really is like the theme of this game, right? Uh, when people see that you coin... I mean, they start hurling. You see it on SBS chat and world chat, right? Uh, everything from the mommy's credit card line to the F you to the you just buy wins and it's pay to win. And the trap keep was really the equalizer last year. Um, but the problem is what happens whenever the K, the, the K45s have uh, big meat layers. And, and it kind of really trying to kind of change the way you have to approach uh, soloing and rallying, and it kind of forces you into the rally mentality. So I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing for the game. But And, and I'll talk about it at the end of the video where I really think the trap keeps are most useful, and we'll talk about that. So first of all, it's driving me nuts because everybody's talking about the word trap keep and meat layer in two completely in, as if they're interchangeable, and they're not. Um, uh, a trap keep, it uses the absence of layers, right? It's an incomplete keep. And it uses the absence of the upper big layers so that if you send a big army that would normally target that layer, there's nothing there, right? And then mix that with no knowledge of mechanics that you have covered in all my old videos. And it makes hitting it almost impossible to go positive to solo. So you're using the absence of giving the enemy positive points. A meat layer is whenever you have a monster keep and they've got a billion T1s or a billion and a half T1s of uh, ground or, or mount, which is the most, mount being the most popular. And that protects the powerful upper layer troops 
and alter mechanics to reduce the points lost at the top or to maintain a presence of a type of troop so that the next type of troop can't be targeted. So, for instance, uh, some people build a T1 siege lair so that you, you can perhaps withstand one more siege rally before the siege will target your archers, right? The T1 meat lair prevents you. You can, you can whittle your way all the way down from T15, T16 now, all the way down to T2 of mount. And if they've still got a billion five of T1 mount, you're going to throw a big mount rally normally if there were no mount and go way positive. But you're going to barely inch your way unless you can really overpower that meat layer with a heavy, heavy rally. You're barely going to overpower a billion T1s in a keep. So they are a meat layer is a protection layer that on a very heavily built keep. Okay. And to cut to the chase and cut to my final slide here, it's about using a turning a tra- you know the correct way in my opinion to build in ebony and something i wish i learned in january of 2022 when i first started playing or december of 2021 is i wish i had first built a trap layer and then when moving up to the eventual big keep that i am had done so incrementally based on a trap keep built because I would have saved so much money and so many resources that I pissed away not having that defense that I had to use the resources to revive troops or heal troops, which could have been better spent building new troops. Honestly, if I had spent what I spent and wasn't and didn't build the way I did without a trap layer, I'd probably be 80 billion right now. It's that stupid. So um, again, one of the best things that King Singh ever taught me was coin smart, don't coin stupid. Uh, you don't have to coin as hard if you do so. Uh, man, I wish I had learned from that guy when I first started. So um, it's important to know that there is a build uh, developed out of the Asian alliances. I don't know who to credit for this, but it is a beautiful build, and everybody's copied it. This is that build. This is the one build that no matter how many times I've hit it, with every iteration of troop, I've only got one iteration that ever went positive, and that's conditional. I'll go over that on the end. Um, this is, uh, the build that they've developed that is almost impossible to go positive on. And I'll, I'll dwell on these slides a little bit because there's a couple of things to notice here. What you see missing, which is very stark. uh, Oh, and by the way, something to really embrace about this is it does allow a non-coiner to have an impact on battlefields and SVS. So what you see missing here, one of the most important things to realize is mount is missing. Big mount is missing, right? 14 mount, gone. Not even there. 13 mount, small layers, right? And siege is almost entirely gone from here, right? And again, these are things that are notable. And if you've watched my old videos, you know why it's important, right? So siege is gone, which means you throw siege at it. There's no big siege points to be taken, right? And what's your siege going to hit? Your siege is going to be archers. But, you know, and we're going to go through mechanics later, and I'll go through scenarios and tell you why they're all losers and winners and what's on. So, uh, but important to note, and we'll go over the important significance later, upper layer mount, upper layer siege, almost non-existent, right? Very low numbers. Upper layer, upper layer range and one layer of ground, of a million ground of T13s. Uh, the T12 range is the only heavy upper layer there is. Uh, middle layers, look at this, nothing over a couple hundred thousand. This is all very middling, and the highest troop in these middle layers is archers. As you get a little lower, same thing, right? Very. Look at those numbers of siege. It's like just there to make enough of a layer. Most some people send PVP marches with more heavy layers than these. And again, the the mount now as you come lower starts to go up a little bit. Still, the archers are the higher numbers in the meat in the middle of the of the of the keep. Then you get to the mount on the bottom, and they've got a little bit of T three, a little bit more of T two. But that's the trap down at the bottom. The mounted conscripts of 500, and, well, 550 is the number I find you have to be at, 563. And again, these numbers and this trap key was designed before K45. K45 is going to be a game changer. I think this actually forced Ebony to create K45. And um, because a K45 should be able, with a T16, should be able to go positive. I don't know how many there are in the game. I think there's a handful 
and I'm not one of them, so I haven't been able to sandbox it yet. But I do know that you're going to do more damage when the buff uh, incons- uh, differences really come in with the new buffs going way above 3,000. So, yes, the 550 T1 mount is the layer, okay? So think about it, the, you going up against this keep, right? You're sending T15 mount. This is your badass T15 mount, right? Big guy in a knight's outfit. And if you have this guy going up against this guy, this is the T1 mount, right? And again, I'm trying to be conceptual here so people understand it, right? And this guy going up against this guy, it's not going to be a fair fight, right? This guy is just going to demolish this guy one-on-one. But what if I told you there were 30,000 of these guys and one of these dudes, right? That's not, that's not going to work for this guy, this guy. You can have all the armor on you as you want, but numbers count in this game. And it's a turn-based game, so you get one turn to do as much damage as you do, and then the other guy gets a turn. 30,000 of these guys getting one shot at this guy, not going to do so good, right? That's a video that's going to – if you could watch it, and yes, I'd probably pay to see that. It's probably pretty hysterical picturing it in your mind. But one-on-one, no contest. But the numbers here are what changes the game, right? Because the one thing that can't be discounted is this. Even with all the changes in the game right now, You cannot send a 550 million troop rally, period. That's the one irrefutable truth about this game is that the numbers of troops you can have on defense, 578 million in this case, is practically infinite in the game. You can have a 3 billion troop keep. And the number of troops you can send in a rally while now with the new keeps can go upwards of 60, I think is the 60, 65 million is what we're seeing now, where keeps are. Um, It's not even close, right? It's not even close. So it's a numbers game, and this really helps to, uh, the trap keep takes advantage of those facts of the game. This is what I want people to think about whenever they see a a meat layer, right? Look at those ribs, juicy, you want to pick them up, right? House those things. This is what a trap keep is. It's all bone, no meat. It's just the skeleton of a keep. And what is and, and this is the whenever we go over the number one way to deal with trap keeps, it's really easy. Don't effing hit them. You have to hit of you have to take a very distinct series of steps of touching buttons on your screen or your computer to be able to attack it. Just as deliberate as I have to be to pick up these bones. Don't do it. And for the same reason you wouldn't pick this up and start gnawing on them, you should not be hitting trap keeps. This is literally the most, I I literally actually thought about doing a video that was going to be 15 seconds long and would have been like, here's a trap keep, don't touch it, done, story over. But, Again, I, I wouldn't. I, I think that it does teach some lessons, and and knowing it can show you the importance of understanding the game and not just doing what everybody else does. So again, meat layer, right? Trap keep. Don't touch it. This is what you have to do to a trap keep, and unless you're Moses, you're not going to split that layer of T ones, the ocean of T ones to get through, okay? You're not going to be able to hammer through them, so soloing them is a stupid idea, okay? This is a nice example, all right, and this is where we're going to go over a little examples, right? And what I want you to do is I want you to look over here. This is a conceptual drawing of what that build was. You've got a crap ton of the T1s, right, the little mini horses, And you've got a decent layer of ground in the back, but remember the speed, right? When we talked about mechanics, speed determines order of troops on the battlefield. So you've got ground there in between and archers all the way in the back, almost no siege. That's the trap keeps conceptual drawing for me. And this is your army, right? Siege in the back, then arch, then ground, then mount in front. So the mechanics should teach you how to hit this now. Let's go for a solo mount. You send a big monster, you know, that big knight in that picture at the keep. Well, the game works so that this horse right here cannot move past these T1s 
until all the T1s or any troop that's within its range is gone. So he's going to come into contact with the enemy mount of the, the trap keep. In the meantime, the archers are going to just walk up to him and shoot him from behind the safety of that meat of the uh, the T1 uh, mount. And it's going to get destroyed, right? It's still going to do some damage because the mount will kill some mount, right? The reason, and this is an important concept, the reason you set mount better than ground, even though ground has a lot of HP, it has a very low attack compared to mount. So mount being that you're going to get so, so few turns does a little more damage than ground. So mount tends to be, at least with my sandboxing on trap keeps, to a lot of lost SVSs, mount seems to be the better, and, and battlefields, the, it seems to be the better answer if you're going to be crazy enough to try this. Now compare it to a mount rally, right? You've got an army of those monster horses versus an army of those little ones, and the mismatch doesn't look so ugly, right? So from for this reason in particular, mount rally tends to be one of my favorite ways to destroy the trap keeps. Ground rallies can do it too when the buffs are way out buffed, but mount rally, because of the extra attack it has and the fact that it will target that mount first, tends to be my favorite. Since mount is the biggest speed, and mount being a much faster troop will be on that troop a lot faster. Ground, remember, is almost half the speed of mount, right? Even with the buffs, even with the troop speed buffs, skill buffs. So for that reason, cutting a turn off from them or two because of the speed being so much faster, I feel that mount does get better results and I sandbox that and that's what we've gotten uh, on, on, on real life. Now let's take what people think to send with a ton of mount, right? People think to send a ton of archers, but you forgot something. They have a ground army. They have a layer of a million ground troops. So when you solo that archer at those little mounts and you get your little turn to kill some of them, that ground troop with pretty good speed and a melee troop and a pension for wanting to kill archers is going to kill your archers before you can do much damage. So hence, you're shooting and killing T1s, getting a little bit of points, and, and, and whenever you're seeing your battle report, seeing a little number next to power lost, yet they're coming over here with their ground and housing your archers. What are your archers going to do to that ground? Nothing. Your archers are going to be aiming at the mount still, right? So this is a loser, a bad loser. How about a big arch rally? Well, this one's not so bad. Anybody who's run a massive arch rally knows that you can clear out an entire keep, right? Now, having the T1 layer is protective. And again, this is the meat layer concept of the keeps in the back so that the archers will waste a lot of their turns on that little bit of power. That helps, okay? And really, a, an archer rally is a legitimate way to attack a trap keep, yes. But you're going to need a lot of numbers. Two of these guys is not going to do it. Six of these, you need a good number of rallies. You need a, you need a, a bigger number to have, be able to really take hacks at that that layer of T ones to get them out of the way. Now this one is the only way you can really go positive for sure. Sending a tiny little archer army, T ones, fully layered, at the same thing. This actually does go positive, but. The downside is, is who wants to freaking fight at 9 million power per, per attack, right? It's just a little bit more than frustrating to sit there and go, yay, I went positive 2 million, 9 million versus 7. It's not going to, it's not sexy. It's not fun. And frankly, it's frustrating. So that's not ideal, right? And how about big siege? Soloing a big siege at an army that's got a 550 million T1 mount, a million T1 ground isn't going to go well for you. We all remember from the intrinsic buffs, right? Siege is very weak. It relies on distance and mechanics to be able to be effective. And you've got two of the fastest troops there, one in overwhelming numbers and another one in overwhelming force on it. And you know, anybody who plays this knows that ground has a complete hard on for siege. So the ground will make its way to that siege and will eventually demolish it before it really can do much damage. 
All right. Big Siege. Now, this one actually does work pretty well. This one works pretty well. The, the real problem with it, though, and that the reason why you take losses on this, that ground is going to hack through your some of your Big Siege, and you're going to hemorrhage points. So it's not the best one, I find. Uh, some people have told me they like using T11 Siege. And I find that there is a lot of variability in the trap keeps in terms of not so much in the build that that those reports from earlier have gone all over the place and people have kind of mimicked it. Uh, but more so in terms of refines, in terms of general level, in terms of how strong the general is, and in terms of how good their subgens are. And that makes a huge difference in terms of how a trap, to, trap keep performs. And I find that the stronger all of those factors are, uh, you know, the very well be built, well subbed out, well generaled trap keeps are absolute houses. As a matter of fact, I even found some guy on YouTube the other day who has an entire channel designed around his trap keep. So I find it funny because it's not as sexy, but it is kind of nice to to uh, to you know shine people on with tons of money and don't have meat layers and frustrate the shit out of them. I get that. All right, I totally get that. Um, so, uh, but, but again, it, it's not as fun. It's not as sexy. And frankly, nobody's going to the finals of Shalons and nobody's going to be a, a, you know, top team in all-star with a team full of trap keeps. It's just not going to happen. It's not. So when you get to the really high level of play trap keep, yeah, maybe one or two will get you a little bit of points in the battlefield, but you're not going to be, you're not going to be, you know, winning a high, high level in the major. So or Super League with it. So, again, as a personal choice in terms of how you use it, I leave that all to you guys. Now, this is the one. This is the one combination. It's a rally here. But the one combination I've managed to go solo positive with a trap keep. And you have to be a big army. You really got to be a K40. And um, it's a siege mount rally. Or a siege mount. And that, But that's this is to illustrate the rally version. But the mechanics here are going to work for solo too. We all know, let's go troop by troop here. On your offense, you're sending in T15 mount with it. And I've experimented with this and I found about 25 to 40% mount uh, works beautifully here. Um, and you bring that mount out here and he's going to sit there and stop all you have to counter the siege. Right? The mount's not going to move past it till it's dead. The ground's certainly not going to move past it till it's dead because it's got a troop in its way. We know that the mismatch of mount, your T-15s over their T-13 or 14 grounds, favors your mount. It's just, can it hold out against 550 million of them? Usually not. And you usually lose this attack, but you can go positive on power. I will say that using it and sandboxing it, I've learned and I've actually reached out to the people that I hit and asked them later, like, what do you kind of refunds you have? If they have five to six refines that are flat mount HP, right, over here, turning these T1s pretty much to a T6 or 7, I'm not going positive. It's five is the magic number, really. And it's got to be gold refines. I'm not talking about, you know, five purples. And and it, th if that happens, it's really hard to go positive. But if they haven't spent the gems to do that refining or they don't know about the flat refine being the one of the most important steps to doing a trap keep, I've gone way positive uh, in SVS. I took almost 900 million on a solo hit with this army that I was ha I was uh, 65 to 70 percent siege, 25 to 30 percent mount in that army, T15 mount and T13, 14, 15 siege, and I was able to go positive. So I lost, uh, I think it was like 450 million and took 900 million. Uh, but it relied on them giving me a gift a little bit. Like, they did not have it. When they've had six or more flat refines, I, the best I've been able to do with this build so far is go even. So, um, important to know. So, again, let's go back to my concept here in terms of meat layer, trap key. Best way... Um, to uh, think of a trap keep build as a good scaffolding before you go to a big keep. Uh, 
you need a minimum of five flat mounted HP refines if you're going to do it. You don't build big siege, right? Because if you did build big siege, somebody could attack you with siege and take all of it. So the absence of the siege is what really makes a trap keep effective. You want decent wall generals. You want to buff your archer attack. You know, all of your attacks should be archer attack on your wall general. You do want ground and mount buffs, particularly uh, the uh, flats. Um, you know, the flat T1, I'm sorry, the flat HP mount is the most crucial. I found that defensive mount and or ground, uh, I'm sorry, uh, defense for mount and or ground is, is an incredible uh, uh, advantage to it. Like they, the, those ones, the ground in particular really did well. Uh, whenever you do the flat, the, the, the flat defenses for ground and, and, and mount, uh, and the subgens, right? The ideal subgen I found for this and the guy who, who I had the worst, uh, exchange with Jackson, he had nine Jacksons, right? Mount attack, range attack, debuff. So it was very difficult to go positive against him. The defeats, how are you going to defeat a trap keep? Here's the really easy answer. And I thought about throwing a whole bunch of photos and memes here of that big red button meme and the staples that was easy button. The big red button you're trying not to push. Ignore them. Just ignore them. Because what's the most impressive thing and the, you know, humiliating, the way to, the way to shine them on, right, if they're shining you on, the way to humiliate them is that they can't do anything. Right? They can't. There's no army in there. There's no meat to come after you. They don't have powerful troops. They don't have siege. They have barely one ranged bullet. There's no mount bullet. There's really no ground bullet. So the best way to defeat them is to literally just ignore them. And whenever you have them uh, uh, coming at you, they'll, they'll, par they'll park right next to you in battlefield. They'll start scouting you. They'll start, you know, changing their name to your name and their vulgar words, say something about your sister or your dog or both of them together. I mean, it's just anything they can do to get you to attack them, they're going to do. And when you ignore them, you'll drive them friggin' mad because they literally can't do anything else. They need you to hit them to be effective. So ignore them. I know it's hard in the beginning. I know you spend a lot of money on your keep and your buffs and you want to tell yourself, I'm going to be different. It's not going to work. It's just not going to work. And the reason I did the whole elaborate video is so that you understand why it's not going to work. It's not supposed to work. All right. They've taken almost every single rule on every single mechanic, on every single extrinsic factor for every single troop and built this incredibly well thought out keep. You're not going to beat it. I'm trying to find the countermeasure with the mount, with the siege mount mix. And I, again, I need a little help to get there. So the one thing that will scare the shit out of them is the rallies. When they sit next to our hive in SVS and want me to hit it, I just set the rally and nobody joins. And the next thing you know, they're gone, right? They shit their pants because the rallies is going to zero them. And the, generally, people who embrace this are either new to the game or they're non-coiners. And when you zero one of these guys, it hurts them bad. Right? They tend to not have a ton of drops in life. They tend to not have a lot of gems. They tend to not have a lot of uh, resources to be able to heal 1.8 billion power. And it's not cheap to do. So um, generally, the rallies I send, my favorite right one right now I'm using is mount uh, or ranged. And then, you know, uh, the siege mount mix, I do like that a lot for my... Um, Solos, if I'm going to be, you know, if we're, if we're billions behind an SVS, which unfortunately happens a lot lately, um, and it doesn't matter, I'm like, it's time to sandbox, you know. Uh, I will say that there's been a couple times I've used it in Battlefield as a rally, where I told everybody to mix their marches, you know, and we were behind one time. It was funny. Uh, there was a guy with a crazy meat layer. He was pretty much whittled down to a trap keep, which again is one of those things that I have loved to do. Uh, if you have enough presets, uh, and you can actually set a preset for a trap keep. After you're zeroed, if you want to really shine on another alliance, if you really want to shine on somebody in Battlefield, set a setting for a trap keep, right, for a march setting, and after you're zeroed, heal it. It's not cheap, 
but it's a great way to shine people on. So, uh, and a lot of fun. So, um, I don't send ground. Ground tends to do ground with the new ground and the new keeps, and you've got K42s and 43s. You can solo some of these, but if you've got, um, unless you have massive buff advantage, I don't recommend ground because the mount does hold it up. Range can kill ground. Anybody who sent a five, you know, uh, zero to seven billion keep in one shot with range knows range can kill ground troops if they're stalled in the battlefield. So I don't send ground unless you have a massive buff advantage. Range attack debuffs, if you can get them, they're going to have to be native if you're going to rally. But if you're going to try soloing, they're also just as important. A small archer attack is I just use that to shine them on. I just follow them around and hit them with the little tiny, you know, T1 archers just to watch them go negative and negative and negative, negative and SPS. And they're like all pissed because they're negative 30 million, but it's funny to me. Um, and then solo, right? You need them to screwing up the flats. I can test it with a baby ranged. I know exactly how much of my baby range correlates to somebody having how many flats through sandboxing. And that's important. If you're going to try it, you got to do that. The second I can tell someone has either very poor refines or they didn't do it right, that's when I send the siege mount. And it's fun because, like I said, uh, there was a guy that I went, he was 1.8 billion, first hit. 900 million next hit 900 million zero heal then go again and i think i did it like seven times it was a lot of fun and it, it was worth a lot of points in the svs so my final take on trap keeps and the reason i really want to get this out there is it's an ideal first step to big power you waste minimal resources on defense so you're getting great value for all the resources you're building while honing necessary battlefield score skills like getting the hell out of the way of rallies so, you know, the one thing that drives, drives me mad that I didn't realize until a couple of months of playing this game is every single resource I spent on healing was a waste because I could have spent it on growing and getting out of that danger zone of power between three and seven billion you know, or two or two and five billion because that's a really dangerous place to be. You're, you're, a, you're a juicy solo target. You're a juicy rally target. You really can't defend in that power level. It's so hard to do. So, um, again, it's a great first step. The The other thing that uh, I'd recommend that people do is memorize power sizes that correlate to different trap keep builds. I chose this one because I think it's the most difficult to defeat. There are a couple other builds, but they're not built on almost the same, if you will, ladder of, of, of premises for the game that they have little they have better weaknesses in. There's a 2.3 billion one. Uh, there's a 1 billion one. This is the 1.8 billion one, right? And the second you see that power of 1.8 billion, I, I, you got to put a huge red flag up. You have to scout that keep before you try to solo it. You know, 1 billion and below is generally pretty easy. That there is, like I said, 